thing going one way or another. Really appreciate everybody for tuning in. You guys know how it go. I I got to. You guys know how this thing go. Got to represent Dallas. Wherever I go, we got to represent the Dallas, you know. Uh, just got this today. You know, you guys see it. You guys see it. You, you know it's official. It's official. <laughs> but whatever, never here nor, ne- neither here nor there. Um, it seems as if though it may be the end of the road for my brother, from another mother, Chris Richard. It's one of those things where I have to say to myself, man, the, his ability to uplift this team, to bring him, bring everything around. Uh, man, I don't know what Jerry Jones is uh, going to do with this whole scenario. But the best thing that we can say is that um, hopefully, and I mean hopefully, um, we can figure out a way. Um, it is what it is at this point. You got so many offers out there on the table. So many opportunities that's out there in the mix. And, and I'm telling everybody, hey, all we got to do is just figure out a way to keep this man on his team, whether it be uh, saying, okay, we're going to promise you defensive coordinator position. It's yours. Don't let him go. Oh, man, he needs to be paid. This is for my guy, JD53. JD553. Yeah, it is what it is at this point, right? But he earned it, you know. He earned every bone he can get out there, and um, we we may have dropped the ball. Um, it's just one of those things where we can just do a blast, like a massive email or or a tweet to, uh, I guess, Derek Eagleton, maybe uh, David Hellman, maybe uh, Fish, uh, Mike Fisher. So the work can eventually trickle down to Jerry Jones, and maybe he can just say, "Okay, we'll, we'll figure out a way to keep this guy moving, you know, in the right directions." Yes, indeed. He said, "Law Nation, stand up, Romy. What's good, man? Shout out to you, man. Thank you for tuning in to the Nation, five-time champ. What's good, man? Thank you, thank you, thank you. No cap on coaches. I've been saying that all year. No salary cap, zero. <laughs> Zero salary cap on coaches, man. All we got to do is figure out a way, Jerry Jones. But Jerry Jones loved the money. Yes, he loved the money. And and when you love the money, when you have all your hopes and your desires on the money, <laughs> then you 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 will, you will fail to make these type of changes. You know, um, what Green Bay is out there looking for him. The Jets, the Miami Dolphins, the Arizona Cardinals. Now, this could be like one of those Rooney rules where they're trying to fill it in and say, okay, we're going to get the brother on the team or we're going to at least interview the brother. We really don't have any interest in him. But Chris Richard, when you just listen to the man speak, you sit back and you say to yourself, my goodness, my goodness, this guy is deep. He's thorough. His knowledge is vast. His intellect is on a great level. And then he, he speaks on, on, on smaller levels where it's about the team, the team, the team. And that's what we need, man. That's exactly what we need. Uh, Coconuts, what's up? 73. Why wouldn't he lead? Why wouldn't he want to be the man? I don't know. Um, here you go, Eric, man. Shout out to you, man. Thank you for tuning in to the nation. Janiqua, appreciate you. Jerry going to have to open up those pockets. Yes. He's going to have to open up those playbooks, man, too. So, But never mind. I'll just play it. He's going to have to open up that that, that money. He's going to have to pull it up and say, okay, hey, I'm a B in there with a B. And the only way you can spell B in there if you put Jerry in it. So I'm going to go ahead and pay this man to make him the highest paid defensive coordinator out there. But somebody going to argue the fact like, hey, what if he's done really, you know? And, you know, this is Rob Marinelli's team. This is not his team, you know. Uh, but we can see the difference. Those who've been following the Cowboys for a long time, we can just see the difference as it relates to attitude play, right? Uh, look, Ant- <laughs> Antonio Brown, man, he, he fell off the wagon last year. He's creeping up. He made a crucial play the other day. He made a crucial play. On that fourth and ten play, knocking the ball out, you know, being a volleyball warrior almost, batting that ball down. And 
and, and switching Byron Jones over to the, uh, the cornerback slot. And we already know how Byron Jones was playing the previous years. Come on now. Yeah, they need to pay my coach. This is from uh, <laughs> Savage Time. Shout out to you, man. Money won't do it, though, Jordan K. Uh, I, I, money. Yeah, sometimes titling and positioning is everything. I agree. I agree 1 million percent. But, man, man, just pay the man the money and, and just give him the offer at least. Don't say, okay, go go out there and, and see what you, your value will be because a lot of times, uh, a lot of times when we look at it, we look at it from this aspect, right? When somebody goes to another team, the, the, to be the head coach of the New York Jets, it may not to from our from our perspective. It may just be like, okay, you go in there, you're gonna be crashing, burning. But we as men, we like to conquer. We like to be the sole survivor. You know, we like to say, okay, no one climbed this mountain before, and so many times, you know, these people fail. I can do it within the the, the least amount of time, and I would not. I I will conquer. I would not fail. I would not fall to the to the wayside. I am a conqueror, you know. So we like those challenges, and that's what life is all about, right? <laughs> Who can run the mile the fastest? Who can run the you know the hundred yard dash the fastest? And then sometimes it can be like, okay, the challenge is mine to flip and change the Browns over to win the Super Bowl for the first time in many of years. Let me take that mantle. Let me take that challenge, and. Uh, for me to switch and change the Jets around or for me to switch and change the Miami Dolphins around. Sometimes that's bigger than the, than the picture. Think about this. Uh, old folks used to say this. I'm going to give you all some old folks talking. It's hard to see the picture when you are inside the frame, meaning that you can't see what's inside. You can't really see what's all around you because you are inside the frame. <laughs> old folks used to have some sayings, man. Uh, <laughs> Jets is a hot job. You in New York? You in a, uh, uh, I guess a, a city with, of course, in New Jersey, whatever you plan at with the Jets. But you in a city with a lot of value, a lot of history, and for you to change that organization around, it would immediately put you on a Mount Rushmore of of, of being a coach. <laughs> um, this is for Eric. Uh, he says, "Law, if for some reason Chris does leave." Who would you recommend to take his place? That's a great question. That's a very great question. Uh, maybe a Todd Bowles. <laughs> He's out there on the market. Uh, maybe the uh, the Arizona Cardinals coach. I think he's a defensive-minded guy. I mean, there's guys out there. I, I, or you can just go to the college routes. Maybe you guys can go out there and find a college, college guy. Book Thomas, what's up, man? Shout out to you. Sober Truth. Uh, I heard the Jets are interested in <laughs> Cliff Kingsbury as well. I mean, that that would be, you know, uh, the angle. You would still, even if you get a Cliff, you would still need a defensive coordinator, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you can do it vice versa. You can hire Chris Richard and say, okay, since he have, uh, uh, I guess, NFL experience now and um, – and you have a fantastic offensive mind uh, decision. Let me just merge these two together, so it can go, it can go either or either way. Yep. Um, and I think this game right here that we go, let me just move over to this talk right quick. I'm gonna insert this into Chris Richard maybe gone talk. Let me insert this right here. This is a big game. This is a huge game. This is a gigantic game for him. And here's why. This is a team that he should know everybody on that roster. Uh, uh, we, we saw the first week or well, the third week of the season when he played against the, the team that he came from uh, that, that we, we utilized Tavon Austin a little bit. And he was able to get a free. Uh, he was able to score a touchdown. He was able to do an end around for 18 yards. We moved the ball down the field. We just had those issues with the red zone. And then on top of that, we had issues with a guy that wore number 29. But I think that Chris Richard, he should have everybody playing to the optimum, optimum level. Because if not, then we'll look back at this and we'll say, hmm, 
is he really worth the value? If he's really worth the salt, if this defense fold up like a lawn chair this weekend. So this, this is a big measuring stick right now <laughs> because everybody calling now. But, boy, if we get down there Saturday night and when the lights turn off and everything is done and everything is over with and the Seattle Seahawks only got 10 points on the board and we end up having 24 points or beyond, man, you're thinking these people are knocking down the door now for Chris Richard. Oh, my goodness, there's going to be a lot of people out there saying, okay, give me him now. I don't care. <laughs> so we should be like, man, they need to call the uh, <laughs> the union, the players' unions, and, and have some type of an agreement where if you lose a coach like that, you got to get draft picks in the return or something. You know, it, it's got to be something like that. Play action will be the key for, to the victory uh, this weekend. This is from Mando Munez. Play action is always the key to every game. You got to do at least play action once and twice a game. And remember, I said this earlier, uh, you know, throw that mug deep. Uh, we saw how you get out these guys off the single high safety look. The best way to do that is to actually do this right here. Throw that mug deep. <laughs> yes. Test out those edges. And uh, I guarantee you now, since the mergers of Blake, and hopefully he can match these things up two games in a row. Oh, my goodness. That will, that will open up the middle of that, that seam route. That, that'll get him out of that single high safety look. You can't have the, 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 the deep safety to cheat over to the, to the opposite side. Man, it would be nice. It would be nice, man, if we can just attack down the field and do those things. If uh, Let's see what we got over here. Leron Evans, what's good, man? We need Dak to use his feet. I think that this is a game that you can't play safe with. Uh, I think that everybody's going to play on the edge. Everybody's going to play like it's the last game of the year. And I think that he will utilize his legs. I, I, I just don't see it any way. I don't see it any other way. Trey Craig, man, salute pr to you, man. Appreciate you for tuning in. Run, Zeke, stop the run of the Hawks. That sounds simple, right? They're the number one rushing team in the NFL. But I, I agree wholeheartedly what you're saying. Yes, I do. My Cowboys family, salute. Yes, appreciate you for tuning in to the nation. Really do. Open up the whole playbook. They will. They got no choice at this point. Um, we got to run some up-tempo. It's from Man Mandu... <laughs> Mando or Mandu? Is it Mando or Mandu? I can't read. <laughs> Roy, what's up, man? Louisiana Roy, man. Yes, what's up? Happy New Year to you, man. Appreciate you. Longhorns up 17 to 7. Shout out to them Longhorns. <laughs> Armando. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, Armando. All right, so what we have here, uh, much to love. <laughs> much Ken 214. Appreciate you tuning in to the nation. Uh, who else we have? Curtis Cutler, law for offensive coordinator. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, this is the thing. If I was the offensive coordinator, I wouldn't have a ton of plays. Um, I, I'll be horrible. I'll be so predictable uh, because I just don't have the experience as far as the long, the long haul. Now I can be an advisory. I, I think that I, that will work out better for me advising uh, 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 them what to do. And I know a lot of people are going to laugh at that and say, man, what the hell is this guy talking about? He's going to advise me. It's hard enough to tell people who make $45,000 a year what to do, right? <laughs> and then it's hard to tell people who make 90000 It's hard to tell people who make probably $120 million. Uh, But I know for sure, when you got egos in a room, it's just hard to tell people what to do. And that's just the bottom line. So the best thing that we can say um, when it comes around to the National Football League and everything like that is that we can be as fans, critics, and also uh, try to analyze things to the best of our knowledge and just look at it from a fan's point of view. And that's what I try to do with my channel. I, I bring everything on from a fan's point of view. Um, I just look at things the natural way of looking at things as far as uh, what need to be improved on, what I can see for our tendencies. Because put it like this, I don't make $600,000 a year or $800,000 a year, right? 
But the guys, the opposing teams out there, their coaching staff makes beyond that. And that's their job for 24 hours. If they can pull out, if I can point out things, I know for sure they can pull out and point out things that the uh, opposition is doing or uh, what, what the Cowboys' tendencies are and what they try to bring home and things like that. So that's what I try to bring out, you know. But far as uh, Scott Lenahan, his vertical offense, to me personally, it's working uh, to a small degree with this particular quarterback. Now, you can only imagine Dak Prescott with a West Coast scene, you know, scheme. I meant to say a West Coast scheme. <laughs> he'll be even. He'll be better, you know. Or if you can imagine him with a spread offense, like a RPO or or a design that for that to be the main offense, you will see a difference, man. You will see a difference in the skill set, his play, and all a whole bunch of stuff. But neither here nor there. Let's see what we have over here. Tyrone, what's good, man? Sean Lee has been the best backup a linebacker we have. Mm, yeah, 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 Sean Lee. Shout out to Sean Lee. I am jazzy. What's good? Dak is better outside the pocket. I agree. One million percent. Him rolling out. Now, eventually, you want him to grow and develop and pass it into the inside and stepping up through his throat. But right now, we don't want to see that right now come Saturday. We want to see him doing what he did with the Giants. But we just wanted our defense to, you know, stop them a little bit better. But we want to see Dak Prescott roll into this what? Right. <laughs> We want to see him roll into his right, not to his left. Of course, that that touchdown pass to Cole Beasley, the, 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 the one that captured it all was to his left. But collectively, we want Dak Prescott to roll out to his right. We don't want no new stuff. We want him to, uh, if now, if the pocket is clean and if the throw is there, yes, step up through, step up through your throw and things like that. But outside of that, Roll that brother to the right. If it's there, take it. If it's not, run the ball with your legs. Ha do some reverse. You roll to your right. Have Tavon Austin roll into his left. We can set up a tons of plays with that. And, and this is the thing. When we saw the empty formation, uh, the, the, thing, the thing is, when I saw the empty formation this weekend, my goodness, when I saw the empty formation, they had Tavon Austin to the right side of Dak Prescott. My guy, my brother from another mother, no other. Cole Beasley to the left side, inside. And um, empty formation, meaning that they don't have no, no running back, nobody. And they, they actually did it out of 11 personnel. So they only had one tight end out there. And I think he was lined up to the right. I'm trying to do this all from recall. Or just imagine this play. And what they did was everybody – the Giants were like, oh, snap, how am I going to stop this? Because we can send the pressure, but we know for sure that, could, <laughs> that if this number 10, if he runs vertical, it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. So we can still man up everyone, and we still got Cole Beasley to worry about. They had a, they fooled around and left. they was in their base formation. They had to put a linebacker on Beasley, and they had a linebacker, for crying out loud, on, <laughs> on Austin. And everybody else was manned up on the outside with the two single high safety look. And I said, man, if you give those two guys, those little short area quickness that they got one-on-one -on -one into the inside, is over. They didn't know how to stop that. I was looking at the tape. I rewinded. I rewinded. And I was actually working on film on that before I jumped live. And I was, sitting, I was looking at that film. I said, man, that can be a deadly combination to teams. If we can maintain at least three or four seconds for protection before they can run that little shallow cross route or drag route across that middle, my goodness, it's possible, guys. It is possible for this offense to step it up to not just this level, but to this level. But get, getting back to Chris Richard, man, that's enough of me talking about the offense. I'm talking about Chris Richard right now. How are we going to keep and maintain Chris Richard on this team? Jerry Jones. Reach deep down in your pocket. Go call those investors. That's the star in Frisco. Go down there at the uh, Arlington Station and, and just walk over there to Texas Live and talk to those investors and say, hey, I need this Chris Richard on this team. If you can just slide me a few dollars, I promise you, I will pay you back in full. 
when we host this Lombardi Trophy <laughs> for years and years to come. Because when the Cowboys win, everything else brightens up everything else, right? <laughs> oh, man, I'm just joking with y'all on that, but it will be nice, right? Jerry Jones need to do that one way or another. Let me see who else we have in here. Lean, 18, what's good? That got to get a little more comfortable with his footwork. I agree, but uh, he is working on a lot of that. Uh, David G, what's good? Richard is out. Todd Bowles will be back in Dallas as a defensive coordinator. Hmm. He speak, he's spoken with convictions. Anybody know is that true? <laughs> Todd Bowles not a bad defensive coordinator as well. You know, he, he's a good guy. My thing is when you got too much food to eat, sometimes you eat too much of the wrong thing and you don't eat everything that you're supposed to eat and then you become the New York Jets. <laughs> Not being able to manage the team. Now, Todd Bowles is a little different. He's a very soft, subtle spoken guy. He's not a fiery guy. And you guys know that we got too many soft choir boys right now. Jason Garrett, he's, he's a clap, clap guy. And I'm not trying to throw solder and shade at Jason Garrett. He is what it is. That's his pedigree. That's his style. That's his motif, as I normally say in certain categories. <laughs> we needed that fire and brimstone guy. We need that balance, man. Chris Richard is a guy that's going to get into the face of his players and say, why in the hell you didn't turn your head around? I don't care if you is Byron Jones. Turn your head around. And then look at me. Look at me. I'm a man when I'm talking to you. That's the type of fire Chris Richard brought to the team. And that's what I like. That's the, that's the truth. That's the honesty. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could paint a picture and different, make different narratives about it, but it is what it is. Some people need that type of fire and brimstone type of guy to speak with his full passion to these people. And I think that that's what a Chris Richard brings to the team. I, I think I think of uh, guys like Ray Lewis's of the world, if he ever become a coach or something like that, speak fire into his teams. Um, I think of the, the Terrell Suggs, those guys, man, even a Bart Scott, even though I, he'd be on first thing first, I'd be busting him up across his head on my shows or what have you. So we need that balance, guys. Um, are the so-called experts are picking the Seattle Seahawks to win, shaking my head. I like, look, Brian Bradford, I like being the underdog. I like when everybody counters out. Uh, I am Jazzy say Mr. Clapper may may her bye. <laughs> bye bye. I don't know. You talking about Brett Mayher? Maybe Brett Mayher need to be gone, but the guy can kick the uh, the fifty yard field goals, you know. It's quite funny. It's uh, it's crazy to me that uh anything beyond fifty yards, Brett Mayher can make him. But anything kind of close, we all, we all like bird box around this mug. We like, oh, please, please, please just make the kick. Make the kick. I don't want to open. I open my eyes. We like bird box around this joint, man. <laughs> man, that's the only thing that scares me this weekend. Brett Mayhar with a 33-yard field goal kick. And uh, will, it, will he be able to make that kick? <laughs> will it go through the <laughs> or is it wide right <laughs> all his kicks all his misses are like wide right all we got to do is when Brett Mayhar gets up there just do something crazy or, or just just spot it at the 50 yard line say you know what we we'll give y'all all of the underneath stuff we just gonna move it back to 50 yards you know uh it, it is what it is <laughs> Uh, what's your score prediction, fam? Chris Longley. Uh, I, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm greedy. Can I be greedy, Cowboy Nation? Can I be greedy? Can I be greedy? I'm going to be greedy. <laughs> I'm going to be greedy. 24-10. 24-10 in, you know, Cowboys Nation. I don't want them to score. No more than 10 points. Maybe 13, but no more than 10 points. 33, 24, 17, 14, boys. Ooh, Ted, you going to have me just just nervous, boy. 17, 14 game. I hate that. 24, 13, skill prints. Yeah, that will work. That will work. Uh, incognito, what's good, man? Appreciate you for tuning in to the nation. Uh, Coconut, 7-3. The Cowboys could have a new coordinator next season. They could. Scott Linehan may be gone. I heard some news and some, some stuff out there that he may be gone. 
even if they uh, win the Super Bowl. That's that's as crazy as news, but I would be like, okay, it is what it is at this point. <clears throat> Most important offensive line, yeah. They are evenly matched. Uh Let's see. Let me see. Who who said they are evenly matched? This is Ted. M P C B. Let's look at it. Quarterbacks. Okay. They, they one could argue that. And I'm, I'm gonna try to go off my memory and I'm gonna let you guys help me out. I said twenty four uh ten. Uh, somebody says 24-13, I'll live with that. I'll live with 28-13. I'll live with 24. I'll, win, I'll live with a win. It could be 13 to 12. I'll live with a win. <laughs> but uh, let's let's go by off the top of my head. I don't, I don't have no cheat notes. Um, so I want you guys to help me out as much as you guys can. Uh, let's do this. All right. Quarterback. Seattle Seahawks. Dak Prescott. Cowboys. The upper hand, one can argue, Seattle Seahawks, right? We're gonna go. We're gonna go. No biasness. No bi- No bias at all, right? We'll give that. We give them quarterback slight edge, and then um, we'll give them. You know, the phone always ring when you live, like ninety five. All right, so we give Seattle Seahawks the quarterback. Then we will switch over to the running back. You got. The running back by committee stands. You got Ezekiel, my main man, Elliot. We, we we would give us Ezekiel Elliott. We give us that win column, right? Our collective running back, Ezekiel Elliott and Rod Smith, is better than their total sum of running backs. Can anybody debate me out of that? I'm going to give you a couple seconds to put that down in the chat box. They got the better quarterback. We got the better running backs, right? All right, what is another skill of positioning? Shout out to San Antonio, Slum210. Appreciate you for tuning in. Uh, a lot of you think we can really win this game convincingly. No, we just need to win. I don't know about convincingly, but I think we just need to win. <laughs> All right, so we're looking at wide receivers. Amari Cooper versus Doug Baldwin. Give me Amari Cooper. All right, uh, Michael Gallup versus the, uh, the 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 Lockett kid, right? G- give me give me Lockett right now. Amari Cooper, uh, uh, what's the name? Is still learning the game. Uh, uh, Michael Gallup still learning the game, right? So we'll give them we, we'll give them that. So we can argue this right here. I'm not going to go line by line on this. Tavon Austin, Cole Beasley, of course. All core, our collective core wide receiving group is better than theirs. Can, can, can somebody disagree? Can anybody disagree? Our collective core of wide receivers are better than the, than the uh, Seahawks. Lockett is nice. <laughs> Shaking my head. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> but collectively, we got Beasley, we got Tavon Austin, we got the Gallup of the world, and we do have the uh, Amari Cooper, right? So our collective, we're we on the offensive side. We'll jump to the defensive side a little bit later. I'm playing this little game. I'm going to try to rush it away. I'm going to try to rush it away. Okay, so our collective core, our wide receivers are better than theirs. Okay, this is Skill Prince, one, two, three. He confirmed. He confirmed with me. <laughs> Yes. All right. So uh, we're loaded. That's with hot fires. This is Chris Longley. Okay. So tight end. Who who is their tight end? Who is the uh, who are the two? Not who is who are the tight ends for the Seattle Seahawks? Because I I think they got some guy named Wilson too. You know, I got I think they got a guy that they catches the ball pretty well named Wilson, who uh, and then that okay, Roger that okay. All right. So. We will say from here for sake of argument, and I have yet to do all my complete scouting review on their particular tight ends. Uh, we'll just give that a draw. And I know I might get some hate mail about it, but just give them a draw. So uh, it goes back to the trenches, right? This is where this is where we win the game. This is how you win the game in the clutches of the situations of matters, right? Down in the trenches. So we're going to look at the trenches of everything. And I promise you guys, I'm going to try to wrap this thing up. I don't want to stay too long. I don't want to keep you guys up all night. Um, 
of course, we got Jarl and we got Schultz. We got, you know, of course, I know our tight ends, uh, Rico Gathers and all those guys, but uh, we're just going to give them a draw, right? Offensive line. <laughs> Their offensive line collectively is not the best in the world, but they solid. They don't, um, they, they don't do as much as we think that our offensive line do because our offensive line been 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 hobbled in a sense. Now, with an offensive line like theirs, they're more of a zone pressure read type of offensive line. They like to do the zone blocking scheme, meaning that they set up their guys ready to run. They're ready to sit back and they go for the run opposed to just sitting back and passing. So this offensive lines are, 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 are built in a sense to be flexible, to get kick out and block for their young quarterback and also for their running attack. So their collective offensive line been solid all year. Of course, we understand that one can argue the fact that the Seattle Seahawks uh, the, the, the year previous from this year had a porous offensive line, meaning that they couldn't stay healthy and things like that. But our offensive line been very volatile, meaning up and down. It just just no course of like straight dominance throughout this particular year because there have been situations where we had injuries to spring it and rears ugly head. We had some rust factor with number 77. So with all that being said, we got a, a volatile offensive line versus the Seattle Seahawks offensive line, who's been sturdy just a little bit to keep the running game intact and also keeping their, their quarterback upright. Now, do, do uh, Russell Wilson get sacked a lot on third downs? Yes. Yeah, I think he's like top five getting sacked on third downs, and Dak Prescott is like number three or something like that. So uh, we're going to switch over to the defensive fronts, okay? On the Seattle Seahawks side of the ball, you got uh, Frank Clark, right? Versus D Law. Who would you rather have, Frank Clark <laughs> or D Law? I don't have their full roster in front of me, so I'm just going off of my memory. We strong, right? <laughs> Give me D Law. Give me D Law. And I hope I'm saying the man name right. It is Frank Clark. Let me know if you guys can correct me if, if I'm not wrong, right? Help me out. They got Frank Clark. Clark is a dirty, but I like it, you know. Not Saturday, though. This is my, my Mondo. Yes, 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 Amando. Give me D-Law any day. Yes, what's up, Junior? Uh, Janika, what's up, 212? Everyone, please make sure they smash that like button. Yeah, smash. Beat that like, like button down. Share this content. It is Frank Clark. Okay, yeah, so Frank Clark is nasty. But who else on that front four that you like? I'm waiting. Because we do have a number 94, Randy Gregory, streaming off the other edge of that uh, particular front four that we got. And then you sprinkle in the Malik Collins, and you if we bring him back Tyrone Crawford, right? Hi, boys, boys, man, I'm talking some names now. See, they got a cast of misfit characters. Yes. <laughs> Frank Clark got 14 sacks, though, so we do need to – we don't need to rest on him. Cleveland Browns, yes. And, and Frank Clark going to be fighting against Tyron Smith. And hopefully, and I think he do stream off of that side. So we're going to have our hands filled. And they got this other kid, uh, Jaron Reed, nasty guy at the inside. Is he, poor? Is he one of those Bama boys? Let me know. What, what school did Jaron Reed play on? I think his number is... Uh, 91 or 51. Yeah. David Irvin would have helped. Yeah, DJ Kyle. <laughs> David Irvin would have made this thing too nasty for it, right? Jaron Reed. Yeah. So we can't forget about Jaron Reed. I'll give them, I'll give, I, I would take Jaron Reed over Tyrone uh, Crawford right now. I'm not going to lie. You know, hook him. Okay. The, the brothers are good. They play with an endless motor, they keep going. Um, so Jaron Reed, yeah. Okay. Who else we got? Chance to stick it to it. Okay, so let me just move off on it because I don't know the other guys that they have on their front four. 
pardon my uh, <laughs> pardon my lack of knowledge on the uh, Seattle Seahawks front four. Uh, Antoine Barbecue Woods, yes, I can't forget about that. Antoine Barbecue Woods, Malik Collins, yeah, we got a good rotation. Then we throw in tacos from here and there, yes. But a lot of people would take Frank Clark. A lot of people would take a Jaron Reed right now. Um, but but I feel you what you're saying. And also, we just move over to uh, Bobby Wagner. The guy's going to fly out to the ball. The guy's going to eat. He's the linebacker for he's the he's the voice of reasoning out there. Uh, he's the last one of the last piece of the Legion of Boom out there, and he will fly out to the ball. There's no there's no there's no fooling him. Uh, Dak Prescott got to play with his A and B game. He can't do he can't move to C. He cannot move to C because Bobby Wagner will eat that up. Now this is the thing. This is the threat that we will pose to them. Um, to get to get Wagner out of that box, to get him stop roaming to sideline to sideline, we got to stretch him out vertical, meaning that the tight end must, and I mean must, step it up. We got to be able to tack up the field. We got to do that. Uh, K.J. Wright, K.J. Wright and Bobby Wagner, those guys are nice. <laughs> All right, so we got Jalen Smith and we got number 55. We do not need to play politics. We do not need to play we do not need to play politics at this time. We definitely, and I mean we definitely, need to keep the continuity going. Because when I saw Baby, when I saw number 50 out there for our team, Sean Lee, and trust me, I L-O-V-E Sean Lee. And he's probably be uh, uh, starting on a lot of people's team right now if he were to play. But what I'm saying collectively is what I'm saying is this right here. All we need to do is keep the continuity going and keep number 55, which is double nickel out there, LVE, Howl at the Moon. I'm going to go to Shaq Griffin. Of course, they got him and they got the other Griffin guy too. Um, but they need to keep that continuity and poise going with Jalen Smith and number 55. We need to. All right, so they got K, K, KJ Wright and Bobby Wagner. Okay. Moving into the inside, as far as the safety, they got a Coleman. They got another Griffin out there. And uh, the cornerbacks, that's the weakness. <laughs> I don't know who their cornerbacks are, but their cornerbacks are grittish a little bit. But there's no one to be like, okay, all right, they're going to scare you. No, they don't have cornerbacks that can scare anybody out there. That would be the weakness. This game focusing on everything for Dak Prescott to light it up like a Roman candle. So last game, the first game when we played them, uh, my phone is seriously ringing, guys. I'm going to have to cut this uh, podcast short. But before I go, the team is well balanced. So whoever brought up that point and had me going by line by line <laughs> against the teams of who good and who's bad or what have you uh, and what we need to do, the team is the NFL is so crazy. It's, it's supposed to be a parody league or what have you. The Seattle Seahawks 10 and 6, the Dallas Cowboys 10 and 6. They did it with a collective running game with their whole entire running staff. We did it with one individual running back, Ezekiel Elliott. They got a quarterback who can throw well down the field, who can utilize his legs, of course. Then on top of that, their defense is a grittish, grimy type of defense who got extreme home field advantage because the plan up there in Seattle is, is spectacular. On the road, you can catch Seattle slipping, and that's why, you know, it's one of those things where it's blessings coming our way because this year at home, we've been fantastic, right? So you sprinkle in what Cowboys been doing. We've been developing Dak Prescott for this moment. He's been, been becoming better and better each and every game. He's trusting what he's seeing with his eyes, developing rapport with these receivers. We got our fantastic running back in Ezekiel Elliott. We got a tight end, emerging tight end that's learning. Uh, hopefully that can step it up, and we got one of the top three defenses in the NFL. All I can say is right here, if we hit on all cylinders with our particular team, then, man, this team can still put up 24 to maybe 28 points against that team because we at home. All we got to do is play aggressive and play our style. T.O.P. take the time of possession off and we can win. Cowboys, that's been my time. I really appreciate each and every last one of you all for yours. Don't forget to hit that like button, share this content, and uh, figure out a way, Cowboy Nation. Jerry Jones need to figure out a way to keep Chris Richard on his team. And that's all I have to say, man. Hopefully he don't go anywhere, but the writing is on the wall. He is leaving. He's maybe gone to another team. Sometimes 
I mean, the opportunities can be too bad, you know, too too bad for us for to see him go and good for him for him to go. So that's just how it goes, Cowboy Nation. It is what it is at this point in time. I really thank you all for listening in to the nation. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Salute. I'm out. Happy New Year. <laughs> Peace. Let's jam on out, baby. Mm-hmm.